Hey, welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks, everyone. I hope you had a great Christmas. We're back in the saddle as we head towards New Year's, and boy, do we have a lot to get to today. Very, very busy weather week. There's almost too much stuff to show you today. I could make a 20-minute video if I wanted. Uh, I'm going to spare you that, uh, and we'll try to keep it under 10 minutes anyway today. But uh, again, a lot to get to. First things first, of course, it's cold outside. As I record this mid-afternoon today, we've got temperatures no higher than about 19 or 20 in most backyards. And a lot of clouds around occasionally, as you can see on the satellite. There's a few peaks of sun here and there, but yeah, overall, pretty cloudy day today. Let me pop on the radar real quick. And yeah, we've got a scattering of flurries still out there. No more accumulating snow for the rest of the day today. Some of us had a coating, even a half an inch uh, worth of snow with a little freezing drizzle mixed in last night. So that made for some slick spots, uh, some scraping of uh, windshields this morning. But uh, ever since then, the weather has been uh, has been pretty quiet today. It's cold here, but of course, it's even colder out across the Midwest, where it was close to minus 30 this morning. They've warmed all the way up to minus 15 along the U.S.-Canadian border this afternoon. So these waves of cold will continue coming out of Canada. We've got another one coming at the end of the week. We could have low temperatures by Saturday morning, close to zero here. And early next week, a week from now, we could have at least one morning, if not two or three, where some of us are going to get below zero. And I'm going to talk about that more in uh, in just a second. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a quiet weather day across the nation. Uh, I'll put the radar back on here quickly. And uh, yeah, there's not a lot going on. Some scattered snow showers out across the Midwest. This little system here, it's moving through Minneapolis, Des Moines. Uh, that's going to come our way later tonight into tomorrow. It's not going to bring much. Maybe we get another coating of snow out of it tonight, tomorrow morning and midday, and then we should be all right for uh, New Year's Eve. I think it'll be dry tomorrow night at midnight, and uh, temperatures back into the upper teens. All right, so that's the present. Let's talk about the future because, again, there's a lot to get to today. I'm going to take my head off the screen here, and I'm going to show you a few different computer models because this is important as we head towards... Uh, Wednesday night and Thursday, the, the computer models are not in great agreement, so this is a this is a tough forecast as we sit here Monday afternoon. All right, here's that uh, little system that comes through tonight and tomorrow morning. There's going to be a little snow with that, uh, low pressure here, a little cold front like this, and we'll get to, you know, again, coating, half inch, candy coating in a lot of spots uh, tonight into Tuesday morning and midday. Maybe there's a leftover flurry Tuesday afternoon. As we ring in the new year, uh, we don't have a map for midnight, but we do have a map for 1 a.m. This is Wednesday morning, 1 a.m. Maybe there's a flurry, but most of it's most of the time just dry. Hopefully you're huddled inside and enjoying uh, enjoying the company of friends and family as we uh, kick off the new year. New York City, Times Square, they're going to be dry and awfully cold. Uh, temperatures as the ball drops in midtown Manhattan, probably no warmer than the lower 20s. So it's cold there, too. So this uh, little system that comes through tonight, tomorrow morning, brings us a coating. And then uh, during the day, New Year's Day, there could be some more flurries. Uh, I'm showing three different computer models here. They all have a similar idea for Wednesday afternoon. Some light green around northeast Ohio, western PA. Maybe there's some you know, flurries around, some snow showers. Best chance for a little accumulation of snow during New Year's Day itself is going to be closer to Detroit, northern Indiana, kind of this zone through here. This far south and east, I wouldn't expect much more than a coating worth of snow New Year's Day. All right, then the fun begins for Wednesday night and Thursday. This is going to be an interesting uh, setup here. What we're going to have happen is, is two different systems that are going to try to merge into one, and how quickly they merge into one will determine how much snow we're going to get out of this. If they don't get their act together and merge in time, we're not looking at a big accumulation. If they manage to, to you know, kind of... Kind of uh, join forces a little bit, uh, you know, we could get enough certainly to shovel and plow out of this. I'm showing a map here for Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m., some light green around eastern Ohio, western PA, indicating some light snow on the Canadian model. Now, here's the NAM model. It has uh, kind of a similar idea. Uh, in the morning especially, we could have some accumulating snow, and then things wind down and become flurries as most of the energy goes over towards the east coast. The GFS model, which I now have up, doesn't have much Thursday morning. The NAM has some Thursday morning, not much on the GFS. The GFS actually uh, kind of shows an idea where Thursday evening into Thursday night, so let me take off my drawing tool again and bring up that map. Thursday evening into Thursday night, see this area of darker greens, this comes up and is what gives us at least a few inches worth of snow. So there's timing differences on the models, intensity differences. I'm not even showing you the European model, which the new version is not quite in yet. Graphically on this particular uh, 
website, but I will show you that the European model, snow-wise, does have a pretty healthy snowstorm for us because it does merge together those two pieces of energy in time to bring a swath of snow up Wednesday night into Thursday and uh, gives us a healthy six, even seven inches around uh, parts of the Mahoning Valley. So this is kind of the, the scenario that's on the one extreme. The other extreme, the lower end, uh, you know, we might get a couple of inches, a few inches. Um, so, you know, kind of factoring in the differences of the models here, you know, we're going to probably start to advertise that uh, we could see anywhere from three to three to six inches worth of snow at some point Wednesday night through Thursday night with a lot of details still yet to be worked out. So take a, that three to six range with a bit of a grain of salt because it's not set in stone at all. There's a lot that still needs to be worked out. But that's kind of our first stab. Here's the European model, the GFS model, again, because it doesn't quite get its act together just in time. It uh, has quite a bit less snow. This uh, would suggest as we get into some of these, uh, you know, kind of light blues in northeast Ohio, western PA, it's kind of a maybe a, a two to four, two to five kind of storm. But uh, six would be hard to come by if the GFS were to have the, uh, the right idea. All right, so that's the situation with the snow. Just to kind of recap, the models are not in good agreement. It's only Monday. We've got plenty of time to figure this out. But uh, if you have travel plans uh, for Wednesday night into Thursday, and some of you may be heading back to work after a long stretch of time off on Thursday, uh, we could be dealing with a moderate snowstorm on the order of a few inches, maybe up to half a foot, if everything comes together just right. All right, let's talk temperatures, because this is the other big story as we get into the longer range. I mentioned that first wave of pretty harsh cold coming down. Well, the European model has low temperatures Saturday morning. Look at this. Uh, now, this is probably extreme and too cold, but I wanted to show you what's on the table on the extreme end. Uh, this advertises low temperatures Saturday morning as low as minus 9, minus 10 in parts of the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. Again, I think this is too cold, but it's something to be watched. If we get as much snow on Thursday, as the European says, and we get a big, deep snowpack, then as colder air comes in and sits over that snowpack, it's going to get even colder. That's why the European probably is so cold, is because it does have a lot of snow coming our way. So this is on the extreme end of things. I think more realistically, um, we're going to see a lot of places close to zero Saturday morning. Here's the GFS low temperature map for Saturday morning. And even it has a minus two around uh, southeastern Trumbull County and a minus four over in Lawrence County. So Saturday morning, uh, I think we've got a good chance of seeing zero in a lot of places. And... If the most extreme idea were to work out, you know, we might have low temperatures that are as cold as minus 5, minus 6, minus 7 uh, Saturday morning. So that is also something to keep in mind, uh, that that is, that is going to be on the table for the start of the weekend. And then we get to early next week. All right, now we're talking next Tuesday morning, so this is a solid eight days from now. So take this with an even bigger grain of salt. But on the extreme end of things, here's the European computer model, low temperature forecast for next Tuesday, the, the uh, 7th. Minus 15 is on this map for uh, the greater Youngstown area. Again, sitting here today, I think this is way too cold, but I'm showing it to you to give you an idea that if everything were to come together just right uh, in the next week's worth of weather, this solution, this idea of a minus 15 morning is not out of the realm of possibility. Now, perhaps a little more realistically, here's the GFS uh, computer model, low temperature forecast next Tuesday. The 7th, it's got a minus 3 in Youngstown, minus 4, minus 5 here and there. I think that's probably a little more realistic. It's awfully hard to get it down to minus 15, minus 16, unless you've got a really fresh snowpack and the sky is completely clear and the wind is calm. It's Otherwise, you're probably not going to get it that cold here in northeast Ohio and western PA. Minus 3 to minus 5, that's not so hard. It's really hard, though, to get as cold as minus 15, unless everything is perfect uh, in the weather department for that setup. All right, that's Weather for Weather Geeks on this uh, Monday. Again, lots to talk about. I'll be with you all afternoon and evening. I'll be on 21 News tonight at 6 and 11, so I will see you then. Thanks for watching.